The U.S. Navy has hired Orbital ATK, now part of Northrop Grumman, to begin formal development of a new missile that can suppress and destroy enemy air defense emitters, known as the the Advanced Anti-Radiation Guided Missile Extended Range, or ARGMER. The new weapon will give the service's carrier air wings more freedom to operate in areas full of integrated defense networks and will be an essential capability for its future F-35C Joint Strike Fighters, as well as one that will almost certainly find its way onto the Yusuf's F-35A fleet, and even on other platforms. Orbital ATK announced it had secured the deal, without disclosing the value of the contract, in a press release on January 24, 2018. The Navy describes the weapon as an update of the existing AGM-88E Advanced Anti-Radiation Guided Missile AARGM, and asked for more than $180 million for the modification program in its budget request for the 2018 fiscal year. The service has been actively working on developing requirements for the follow-on AARGMER since at least 2015. This contract is a major step in Orbital ATK's ongoing commitment to advancing ARGM's counter-air defense capability for the U.S. Navy, Kerry Ralston, Vice President and General Manager of the Defense Electronic Systems Division of Orbital ATK's Defense Systems Group said in the press release. We are committed to increasing the effectiveness of the warfighter to suppress and destroy enemy air defense threats while remaining safe, as such. The Virginia headquarter defense contractor has actually crafted a new weapon that, while leveraging a significant amount of the internal components from the existing AGM-88E, and packages them in an all-new shell. The Navy's requirements for more range, increased resistance to enemy countermeasures, and the ability to fit inside the limited space in the F-35C's weapons bay, necessitated an almost entirely revised external configuration. The Navy's exact range and speed requirements are understandably classified. According to publicly available information, the existing AGM-88E can hit targets more than 80 miles away and reach speeds of more than twice the speed of sound in a final sprint. The new missile will need to have ability to hit targets further away in order to keep a non-launching aircraft safe from enemy defenses. Though the Navy's goal is to combine the weapon with its Joint Strike Fighters, its immediate plan is to reach initial operational capability with the weapon sometime between 2022 and 2023 using its existing carrier-based F-A-18EF Super Hornet fighter bombers and AI-18G Growler electronic warfare aircraft. These two aircraft are the service's primary launch platforms for the AGM-88E and the Navy only plans to reach initial operational capability with the F-35C in 2019. At the same time, though, America's fourth-generation aircraft, especially those tasked with suppression of enemy air defense's mission, or said, have become increasingly vulnerable as potential opponents, especially near peer powers such as Russia and China, have worked to develop improved radars and other sensors linked to long-range surface-to-air missiles. Less capable hostile states, such as Iran and North Korea, are also steadily improving their defensive networks. Orbital ATK says the AARGMER will have an all-new propulsion system in order to meet the Navy's range requirement, but it's not clear what type of power plant it might use. In 2015, the Navy had reportedly decided to focus on a dual-pulse rocket engine over a ramjet to provide additional range, which will give the missile between 20 and 50 percent greater range than its AGM-88E predecessor. A longer sustained thrust capability would also make this new anti-radiation missile more survivable and would substantially increase its probability of a kill. Able to carry a pair of the new missiles while remaining in their most stealthy configuration, the Joint Strike Fighters could help rapidly clear a path for follow-on strikes by Super Hornets or other older fourth-generation aircraft during a crisis. It could also enable other F-35Cs to potentially use their low-observable features to get close enough to destroy air defense components via internally carried precision-guided bombs, such as the standoff-capable Small Diameter Bomb SDB. In addition, with the added range of the AARGMER, F-35Cs tasked with suppressing hostile air defense networks would be able to suppress and destroy hostile emitters further into enemy territory, as well. This could be particularly important when taking on an opponent with multiple, overlapping layers of long-range defenses, and in increasing the speed at which allied forces can knock down the enemy's door and create a lane for other platforms to rush into. Using their own data links and other intermediary communication nodes, 
The Joint Strike Fighters would also be able to feed information from their sensor suite to a fourth-generation aircraft carrying additional ARGMR. All three variants of the F-35 are already set up to gather and fuse together an immense amount of information about electronic emitters and the enemy's electronic order of battle, which could become targeting information for anti-radiation missiles. Under such a scheme, fourth-generation fighters or F-35s in no configuration could act as missile trucks well behind a stealthy F-35 screen, remotely launching ARGMERs on demand. The Navy is already heavily invested in the idea of networked sensors and weapons, with an overarching plan known as Naval Integrated Fire Control Counter-Air, or NIFCCA, which is focused on integrating the anti-air and anti-surface capabilities of its aircraft and ships. But there's no indication that the AARGMER would stay limited to Navy aircraft, either. The aforementioned operational concepts would translate to the Air Force's F-35 as in Marine Corps F-35Bs although the B-model's smaller bay couldn't accommodate the weapon internally as well as those aircraft working in concert with other fourth-generation aircraft and aerial intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance platforms across the services. Its long range could open up more novel possibilities, as well, including using autonomous or semi-autonomous unmanned aircraft to either locate emitters or as the launch platform itself.